The Grade 1 listed building at 3 Grafton Street opens its doors to the public today courtesy of Kasia Kulshak and Simona Michaela Dupure with an exhibition dedicated to the early Opart works of Polish artist Wojciech Fangor. What made you choose Wojciech Fangor not only as the artist with which to launch your London curating career but also as the inaugural exhibition here at 3 Grafton Street? I think it was the, the discussion with Kasia that we start with a Polish artist as Poland is very, Kasia being Polish, um, Poland is very close to her heart. So we were discussing who's the best and for Simon and myself it was totally clear it's Van Gogh. And um, this is how we, how we then decided to do it and Kasia made it happen. She went to Van Gogh, she talked to him and she, you know lots of the work of Van Gogh is in the hand of, of Polish uh, collectors, not so much spread over the world because he went back to Poland and so um, Kasia convinced these collectors also to release works. So my gratitude goes to her. How did you first come across Van Gogh's work? I mean, we all knew of Van Gogh and we saw him sometimes popping up in auctions with targets, but the coherent part, you know, to see really his body and his oeuvre was then researching it, which is not so easy because most of the literature is in Polish. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think he would also have a different standing, but it's not so easy to access him. And I fell in love with him. I was last year in, in at the Art Fair in Cologne, actually, and there was a blue wave um, that was so gorgeous by Fango and I went to the gallerist and was really a step before buying it and, and, and asked the price and then the price was quite stiff so I thought it's not you just can't you know shop it in a sense. <laughs> the piece always kept popping up in my mind and half a year later I called the gallerist and asked and then he said no it's sold back to Poland. It was like blue waves and I still I still miss that painting it was so amazing and therefore I was so happy then to work with him because I thought first of all I thought I find this painting again which I didn't until now but, but we found many many other beautiful paintings. I'm so so happy with the show. You've already touched upon this, but um, obviously Fangor was um, quite large in the 50s, 60s with his op art, and he was the only Polish artist to have a solo show at the Guggenheim in New York, but yet he's not so well known today. You... Because he went back to Poland, yeah. and I think if he would have stayed in America, his career would, would look totally, di in, totally different. And, but by choosing the way to, be, to go back to, to Poland, I think he made a clear decision that his home country is, is more important to him. And he's 92 now, is yes. he still making art? He's still prolific, yes, absolutely, in Poland. He would have come over also for the show, but at the moment he's in hospital, so he oh. couldn't. And are you going to take these works anywhere else after they've been here? Um, I would love to bring them to New York because I think just being in New York before coming here and showing the works to some young artists and gallerists, young gallerists, they all couldn't believe it. They said, well, you know, this could have been done in 2014 also, some of the works. It looks so cutting edge and mm -hmm. fresh and they were completely blown over and I think that that show in New York would, would be very, very influential also for younger artists and I really think we should bring it over. By the way, Fango has four museums exhibitions alone in Poland, so it's happening with him also very much right now, I think. Um, but we want, what I would love to do is that our shows always are kind of eye-openers, therefore I don't want to be in a box to communicate, I do this or that or whatever, you know, commercial, non-commercial, this and that, but that we find something that is really, really exciting for everyone to, to discover. And that's Simon's track record always also. He always, you know, was going for, for young artists. He disco always discovered talent or also in design. So we want to we wanna walk on that path further. To choose Fango for my first exhibition was, um, was not a coincidence. <laughs> I wanted to start to launch this space with an absolutely iconic figure who Wojciech Fango is for me and for all the... Um, for Poland, I would say. A lot of the works that you're displaying here are from private collections. They're all from the private collection. So how difficult was it for you to get hold of them for this exhibition? Actually, it was quite easy because they're all my friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So no, 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 we, don't, we didn't have a problem uh, with that. Actually, we, we had at our disposal a huge selection of works. So together with Michaela and Simon, we couldn't decide what to put. Um, but finally, after many, many hours, we, we just decided on this particular selection that we have here inside. 
the most uh, important for us was the were the works from Guggenheim show from the 72 mm -hmm. which we managed to get and they are actually upstairs the three biggest picture they are the exact ones from the uh, Guggenheim show uh -huh. but i think the most significant is that Wojciech Fangor still is the only polish living artist to have solo exhibition in yeah. Guggenheim Museum in the 70s. His other well-known show was the 1958 exhibition, A Study of Space. The Study of Space in Warsaw, yes. There he was quite groundbreaking because he displayed works not only on the walls, exactly, but also yeah. on easels in the middle of the room. Exactly, that when the word environment actually came up. Yeah. And no one never spoke before about environment in the 50s. No. So he was like a precursor of uh, even of the wording environment. Here we, we decided not to put it in a little bit differently. We, we show the space to the artist and he decided because of the beauty of the building, let's just cover the walls and not create like an environment or slash space because it will be too much. Mm -hmm. So that was his decision, the artist's decision. So he was involved in, Absolutely. in curating? with the installation, with the, yeah, with the selection of, uh, of pieces, mm -hmm. yes. That's why we decided the, all the black and white paintings, they're actually from the London period of the artist, so 64 and 65. Yeah. And we decided that actually it was a nice idea to bring them all back to London when they were actually created here. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. And what about this work that we're standing in front of now? Oh, this is my, I, I especially like the colours of them and it's quite a particular one, it's a square. Uh, everyone knows Fangor for its circles and waves and, but as for me, I love the squares, that's why I chose that one. <laughs> and what is it that makes his work different from that of his contemporaries, so Bridget Riley or Frank Stella or other people who became known for op art? I think he was a precursor of, uh, yeah, he, he just, um, he left these two dimensional paintings and, and somehow create a different philosophy of painting. So what he did that uh, actually when you look at the painting, the painting emanates outwards, you mm. know, so it's completely different. And uh, the blurred lines that you can see, it's, um, it's the special technique that no one knows how to actually create that. <laughs> but he was, uh, he was the one who achieved that. So this is it. It's, I think, the, the beauty of them. They speak for themselves. <laughs>